want you one more time. You can stay seated. I won't make you stand again, but lift your hands to him. One more time, please. I'm going to go down on the floor for a second before I switch. A, a, a guy in the white hat, white hat in the backwards, when you walked in today, Holy Spirit highlighted him, you to me. I don't know if I've ever met you or not, but I don't know if you've ever been to this church. It's, no, no, have you been here before? Your first time ever? Yeah, we're either going to love it or you're going to scare the crud out of you. That's how we roll. There ain't no middle ground. We don't do lukewarm stuff here. You're hot or cold. But man, God loves you, man. He loves you and everything that you've done, and we've all done things wrong. He doesn't remember him, bro. He's cast him to the far as the east is from the west. And all he wants to know that you are a beloved son who he loves you with all your heart. You're forgiven. You're redeemed. You're his son. And, man, he wants to show you that more than you've ever seen it before. You've tried to do good, and you couldn't do good. You tried to do things right, and you couldn't do things right. You know what? Because your best effort sucks. Sorry. But you know what? It's not his righteousness, but it's yours. It's not your effort. It's his blood. And because of that, you're a fully redeemed son, bro. And if you leave this place and I never see you again, you hear those words and go with them and you remember that. There'll be a day you remember this weird dude in a weird church where people groan, smoke, scream, slap, slaps, tongues, everything. But you are a beloved son. And that's how you'll be an overcomer. You'll never be an overcomer any other way, bro. Some people want to come get these offering boxes, so Mark will quit sweating. I can see his bald head glowing from here. I was really hoping Holy Spirit would just light this place up and I wouldn't have to talk. But I do feel like I have some prophetic words. And Didn't Lucas do amazing last week? I don't know if you were here last week or not. Pastor Lucas, I honor you for that word. That was fire. And all those things. and uh, But I really, really feel it's so crazy because uh, I've gotten two words since I've been here. And uh, Phil Davis came to me. And then my Aunt Vicky, I got that kind of second hand about what God is saying. Well, it's crazy, Vicky. It's the same thing. Phil Davis, you spoke to me. It's the exact same thing almost word for word that happened to her at the house today. Word for word. And you're about to see in a second, Phil and Vicky, that he already spoke it. This morning, before we ever talked. Because that's how Holy Spirit walks. I feel like I have to say this if you're a guest and visitor. What was that tongue thing? What was, what was going on there? It's called tongues, interpretation of tongues. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You can go read it. You understand that? It's a gift of the Spirit. It's for the equipping and edifying of the church. What was that? What was that woman speaking in English? That is the interpretation, and that is the word for the house. I know a lot of people don't like it. But you can take that up with heaven because it's all over heaven. Is it misused? Yes. But for us to quench it because it's misused, not saying it was this time, but it, 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 we're, we're ignorant about that. Lucas has a supernatural class you need to attend. There's a plug. So I feel like I'm just not really have a sermon. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that kind of person or speaker. But I feel like I have a word from the Lord, okay? And I ask everybody to listen, and I got rid of your kids for you. So it should be a little easier. Um, and I got this quote. This is a Bill Johnson scene, so I don't want to steal it, but I like Bill Johnson a lot. I believe he's a, he's a general of the faith in our, in our time, and I don't know how, much many, how, mo- how many more years we have with him on earth, but, man, that man's helped me a lot, and he's never met me. But he says this, he says, sometimes we wait for God to show up and make us bold. When more often than not, God shows up when he finds a bold person. In Acts 4, we know that the Holy Spirit fell on them the second time. The Holy Spirit fell upon them, and they were filled with, the Bible says, with, with power and boldness. How many knows that in Acts 4? Am I right, Keith? If I'm not, just throw something at me, okay? And... um. But in Mark 16, it talks about the power of the gospel is being preached. And as the power of the gospel is being preached boldly, what happened was the power of God showed up. 
Smith Wigglesworth says this. Smith Wigglesworth said this. He passed tense. He, he sat there and he said, he goes, that the whole, my, people don't like when I say this, but it's, it's the truth. When the, when the Holy Spirit's not moving, I will move the Holy Spirit. Smith Wigglesworth. What is he saying? Is he an arrogant, narcissistic preacher? No, he knew who he was. He knew what he carried. That's called being a friend of God. But I'm here to tell you that God wants to make people bold again. Uh, I know you ain't getting it yet, and you will in a second. Listen, God wants to make you bold again. The Christian church is not bold. Man, I'm trying to be nice. The Christian church is not bold. We're cowards about anything. And because of offense, because of her, because of the way the Western church has been for 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, whatever it's been, now we sit there and we serve God on eggshells. We speak on eggshells. I thought myself, Adam, living life, and I was afraid. I had a brother. He's not here today. And he sit there and he goes, dude, you always have to come up with something. I'd be like, yeah, God says this, you know, and I would always come up with an excuse. And he says, why do you do that? And I said, I don't know why I do that. So I went to God for it, with it. I went to God with it. And God exposed, handed to me that I was doing it because I, not because he told me to do it, but I was doing it because I have developed this mentality of, of allowing my boldness to be watered down because of bitterness, because of offense, because of people said, because of speculation or accusation or whatever come my way. And so what I found out I was doing is I was trying to water down the, the, the word of the Lord, which is incorrect, which is bad, right? And I found myself doing that, and this dude called me out on it. Thank God for brothers in Christ, right? And, and this guy called me and I go, why do you do that? And I'm like, I don't even know why I do that. But it was a habit developed over time to try to, for me, to water down the word. But, and, and what it was doing is it was stilling my boldness. I was afraid to say it like he said it. I was afraid to proclaim it like he told me to proclaim it. I was afraid to do it because I was worried about others, which is what called a what? one of the worst sins on planet Earth, the fear of Man, and pride. And I feel like I'm more at a place, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I am more at peace with who I am, the gifting he's given me, and I don't give a flying, you know what you all think about me. None of you. And I say that in love. But they, they say, that's arrogant. No, that's freedom for Nathan. That was freedom for Nathan to be Nathan. And I feel like there's a boldness coming on the church, but it's not a boldness that's going to fall from heaven. Everybody wants to make the boldness come down from heaven, and I'm going to be bold. Sometimes boldness, my mom said it earlier, but sometimes boldness is a choice. Adam, you said something on your podcast. You haven't listened. Man, I'm just, I take commission. Adam says, I'm on his podcast. He said, I would rather have a, an aggressive, annoying a, a leader than a passive leader. I said it wrong, but you can fix it. You remember saying that? Adam said that in one of his podcasts. And when Adam said that in one of his podcasts, my spirit leaped, Adam. Because I found myself being that other leader. I found myself being that coward leader, which is my nature. Everybody that knows me personally knows that I'm not a bold person by nature. I'm not an aggressive person by nature. You see me up here, that's the gifting of God. That's the anointing on my life. That's not, but the real Nathan is a little bit backward. And everybody will, amen, awkward. So I have to choose to be bold. I have to choose to call out diabetes. I don't know if anybody in this church has diabetes. I have to choose to call out a redeemed son, even though I, I don't know how that response is going to happen between the church and the individual. I have, to be, I have to choose to be bold. I have to choose to be bold. I don't, I not, boldness didn't come up on me today. I was praying God, Lucas, would just get anointed and start running the aisles and fire would fall. And I would go home and have whatever Tasha's cooking and take a nap. But now I'm here. We're here. And Keith, I have to choose to be bold. Keith's a natural leader. Thank you. <laughs> Keith Bennett's a natural leader. He's always been a natural. He was my leader. But I've had to develop. I've had to choose it. 
And you know how many times the enemy has came and tried to water me down? He's done that a lot. And I'm looking at everybody in this room, and there's some of you in this room that God has tried to shut your mouth and steal your boldness and tell you you're not this person, and you're living on eggshells. You're living life in, in, in status quo. And God has called you to be greater. God has called you to be bigger. But he's sitting there, and he's not going to come with fire, Ben. And so you're going to get a bucket and a shake and shout out a bahanda, badida, badaba. You're not going to do that. He wants you to choose him and rely by faith on his word. It says that you are a mighty redeemed son of the house. And when you are a mighty redeemed son of the house, by faith you can sit there and go, hey, like a lion. Oh, man, I'm glad there's three of you because some of you didn't hear yet. <laughs> the bold proclamation of the gospel was Mark 16. I feel, I feel many are in a season. I don't feel nothing. I know. God spoke to me. Many are in a season where you find yourself uncomfortable and you feel dry right now. I could tell by some of your worship, Lucas was working hard. I'm a worship leader, and now the game's played. This is how we overcome. And you're checking your watch. You're in trouble, bro. See, sometimes praise is just a fire shut in your bones, and sometimes praise is the choice. That's what you were saying. So what my mother was saying. But God said, Nathan, don't worship and look at the people. Which I hate preachers that do that. <laughs> and then he made me be that preacher. And I looked around the room and I saw so many, which is validated to me, Keith, while he spoke to me this morning with him in the secret place. I feel, how many, don't, don't raise your hand. How many of this room you feel dry? You feel numb? You feel distant? There's a lot of you. I would say over half the crowd feels that right now, and that's okay. You can feel dry. You can feel numb. You can feel distant. You can feel like you're doing it. You're going through the motions. You're like, it's the robot thing. You get up in the morning, and you, and you comb your hair. You, how, many ever, how many feel like getting up this morning? You can raise your hand for that. How many felt like, how many of the alarm goes off, and you're like, yes! I get to get up. Today is the day the Lord hath made. I shall rejoice. And be, now, I know maybe five, ten. Nathan didn't. My alarm went off at 6.30, and I'm like, why is it going off? Oh, I'm preaching today. Oh, yes. <laughs> you think I, I'm not joking? <laughs> but I feel the dry, and I feel the uncomfortable. I feel the numbness. I feel what God is doing is he's, I, is, is he's preparing you for some, what, what's to come. That's what Vicky felt. I'm going there. He's preparing this church for what's come. God is in the dry. I just said the manifestations didn't stop. We stopped talking about them on purpose. He told us to. And then he tells us to talk about it. We talk about it. He says to show everybody with flashlights. I'll show everybody with flashlights. We do what he says to do. Period. I've had people say, Nathan, you could go on the road with that. It ain't me. And as soon as I go on the road, it really will stop. But I feel there's a dry, I feel like, I feel, but it's God. Mark, God is setting this church up. I told Brandon McFerrin, we were talking in the, oh, a couple weeks ago, and I sit there and said, you know what? If you're never thirsty, you'll never value the drink. If you're not thirsty, you won't value the drink. My wife likes coffee, like many of you. But she is an extreme, I would say two, three, maybe four. Look, look, everybody, look at me. 32 ounces. Circle K cup of coffee a day. You ask to say, Did you, drink, you drink anything today? We say, yes. I drank four 32 ounces of coffee. That is artificial, and that does not quench you. Matter of fact, I believe coffee dehydrates you. She should be cramping everything in hers, cramping, I'm sure. We thought it was her age, but it's her 90 ounces of coffee a day. But you don't value it. And what we do in a dry season, what some of you guys are doing, is you're trying to drink coffee when you're supposed to drink of the cup. 
You're trying to drink other things, but you're not drinking this true substance, the thing that will quench your thirst. What you are doing is you're sitting here, you're drinking things of, of life. You're th- drinking things that, that, that are artificial. They're, they're a drink. Coffee's a drink. Mountain Dew's a drink. A Monster's a drink. A Red Bull's a drink. A Lonnie's a drink. I go all day. But it doesn't satisfy. She would, Tasha would argue with me. But it doesn't satisfy like it's supposed to. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But that's what we do. That's what some of you guys are doing. And God today is wanting to get people drink, Jennifer. But if we don't want that drink, we're going to keep drinking coffee. Keep drinking that coffee, Jennifer. You're going to find yourself cramping. You're going to find yourself in pain. You're going to find yourself in suffering. Anybody that knows me knows I cramp more than anybody. Quick story my brother will enjoy. He's not here. As we, Todd likes hunting a lot more than I do. Todd is a better redneck than me, no doubt about it. It's the only thing he's better at me as a big brother. Jesus. You can tell him that too. So we're, all, we're in this tent together. One, two, two things. You got two 200 pound plus guys. We're in the tent together. And he were turkey hunting. So we're, this turkey is gobbling on this, this ridge. And Todd's it's like, Nathan, you got to turn around and shoot this turkey. And I'm like, all right. And so I start turning around, but I've had nothing but Lon Johns and Mountain Dew for three days. <laughs> True story. And I start turning around, and my ab, I don't know if anybody's had this cramp before, my ab goes underneath my rib. I didn't know I had abs, but I guess I do, because they go under my ribs, and they went under my ribs, and so now this turkey is gobbling, and Todd's like, he's right there, and I'm like, no. Oh. And I fall on the ground, and I'm literally on my back this tent. And Todd goes, what are you? This is Todd. He's like, idiot, what are you doing? <laughs> At that moment, I didn't even care about no turkey. I had a cramp underneath my rib. And all, I'll send her, you ever done it? You try to stretch it out, get that thing to pop back out. And I'm doing these things, and Todd's yelling at me. Todd's a better redneck than me. You know what I was doing? I was, I was, I was fulfilling my thirst and my hunger with things that wasn't good for me. You want to hear another story that you guys were really like? This has nothing to do with it, but it's a good story. <laughs> so we're turkey hunting again, and uh, we're on the ground this time, and I got to pee. I got to pee. And this, this, this bird, they kind of strut around. They're trying, it's the, it's, they're trying to get girlfriends, and they're trying to strut around, and, and Toss like, quit moving. I'm like, bro, I got to pee. And he's like, you can't, you're going to have to hold it. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I got to pee, <laughs> you know. And, and Todd's like, Todd's like, you, you he, he likes to call me an idiot a lot. I don't know what he does. You know, and, and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, so you know what? I came up with this genius plan. For the first time in my life, I'm going to pee on my side <laughs> in the woods. And so I lay down, and God has gifted men that women don't have this gift. And I'm laying on my side, and I, and I start doing my business. And I'm peeing, and all of a sudden, the revelation came to me. I'm peeing uphill. <laughs> and I'm peeing uphill, and all I can see is this, the river. It's not the river of God. It's the, it's the Nathan River, and that river is flowing toward me. And so I'm trying to, it's back. And, I, and Todd's like punching me, telling me not to move. And finally, I'm like, I'm not peeing on myself. <laughs> and so I get up, and I get up, and guess what? I scared the bird away. My brother's angry, but I have no urine on me, which is the real win. <laughs> that has nothing to do, but it's a good story, isn't it? But listen, I'm telling you, God is, I have to switch gears, but God is, is doing a thing, and there's a dry season, but the Bible says that he works in all things. Everybody say all things. He works in all things, and even in the dry season, he's working it. Even when you, it's your fault, he's working, because he is faithful when we are faith. How many knows that word? He is faithful when we are faith. He works good when we don't deserve good. He is a good father. It's not a song we sing. It's a fact. 
And I'm telling you, there's a dry season that's been at this house. There's been a dry season maybe at your house. There's been a dry season in some of you. But I'm here to tell you today, that dry season, God is about to work in it. And he's about to shift it. And he's about to move in it. And you sit there saying, it's the judgment of God. No, it's not the judgment of God. It's, it's the man. God's mad at me. No, he's not mad at you. You might have put yourself in that place, but he's going to turn it around, Javon. And I prophesy this. I'm not talking to some preacher trying to get you up. I promise you it's going to happen. And when it happens, I want you to come and apologize to me for your doubt. Luke, he works in all things. You know what Luke talked about last week? He works in all things. It's not setbacks or setups every time. That's the goodness of our God. It's never a setback. When you are a son, it's never a setback. You might have to go through correction. You might have to go through a butt whipping, but he will work it for good. I know you guys don't believe that because your theology is jacked up, because you're watching too many podcasts and online preachers, but I'm here to tell you as a father in the spirit, it's the truth. Turn that junk off. Except Adams, listen to this. Jesus says this in Joshua 1 9. He says, Have I, talking to Joshua, he says, Have I not commanded you? Be bold, be strong, for the Lord our God is with you. We used to sing that song. Remember that one? We need Robbie here. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord our God is with you. This is spoken to Joshua, who did not have the Holy Spirit inside of him, did not have the fullness of God inside of him, and still Joshua believed the word of the Lord. Why aren't we? Why are we? Because you know why most of you live in law and, and foolish theology. Well, brother, I believe this. I'm so sick of talking. Look at my life. And I'm about to blow it up. And I say arrogant. Dad don't hates when I talk like that. It's, not, it's the boldness of God inside of me. It will happen. It's not a maybe happen. You better watch your pride, brother. Oh, I've watched my pride. But I'm sick and tired of not being bold because of your opinion of me. I'm sick of holding my gift back because of your criticism and your judgmental attitude and your narcissistic thinking you know what you know. This has nothing to do with what I'm preaching about, but it's fire. <laughs> Hungry people are bold. Hungry people are bold. If you're not feeling bold, if you're not feeling courageous, if you're feeling dry, you have to ask yourself one question. Are you hungry? Do you hunger and thirst after righteousness? Do you hunger and thirst after him? Are you, are you hungry and thirst after the things of this world? They don't satisfy you. Money don't satisfy you. Things don't satisfy you. Clothes don't satisfy you. None of that satisfies you, man. The name brand don't satisfy you. Your Abercrombie and Finch, which is a, a sex trade we just learned, is, 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 is not going to satisfy you. Your Irish ain't going to satisfy you. And your Michigan ain't going to satisfy you. And your Ohio State and sports don't satisfy you. Detroit Tigers don't satisfy you. Don't throw a stone at me, Joel. I Joel's just the press I remembered. <laughs> Thirsty people are bold. You want to see some of the boldest people on the planet? Go mess with the mom's kids. There's a term we say mama bear. You mess with McKenna, there's a mama bear coming out of my wife, all 110 pounds of her. A mama bear will come out. Why? Because when you mess with something that you love, you know how bad the Antichrist spirit has been messing with the move of God and the plan of God and resisting in this nation and the church. And we sit there, and you know why? Because we don't love the church like we say we love the church. We don't love the nation like we say we love the nation. We don't love others like we say we love the others. Because when I see Luke getting messed with, you know what I should do? Mama bear should come out. Or dad bear. This just... It should come out. Denise, when I see that little girl we were talking about being messed with, it should come out of you. It should come out of me. That's called family. That's real family. Family. 
You mess with one, you mess with all. Faction before blood. Some of you get that, some of you all. You know what else makes us bold? Hard times. You know what else makes us bold? Suffering. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? Why was she bold? She was desperate. Desperate for a miracle. Listen, God loves you. The Bible says if you won't praise him, he will allow the rocks to cry out in your place. That's scripture. That ain't no preacher saying that. That's a Bible verse. And you know what? And he will do whatever he does. And sometimes suffering, sometimes pain, sometimes that is the greatest vehicle to get you to where you're supposed to be with God. We rebuke it. We sit there and go, get out of me in the name of Jesus Christ. But it could be the very thing, the very vehicle God is using you to get to where you want to go. Better watch what you pray. You don't pray because what you feel. You pray because what you know you hear Holy Spirit say. Because, Luke, we do it all the time. We're actually coming against the will of God. It was God's will for Christ to die and suffer. It was Christ as God's will, as Abba's will, for him to die on a cross and be last 39 minus 1. It was God's will. And Jesus himself didn't want to do it because what he said, I've heard other people say they don't agree with it, but they're wrong. It's okay. We love them anyway. He says, God, if any way I don't have to be crucified and I don't have to be beaten and I don't have to bleed, and there's any way, God, if there's a plan B, I'm open to it right now. Because he was fully man, yet fully God. Am I right? But he said, nonetheless, you know what we need to get in the church? Some people that can say nonetheless. Oh, that's free. I've never heard that in my life till right now. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we got to get some Christians in the house that are nonetheless Christians. Christians that sit there and say, nonetheless, I want this. I want to do that. I like to do this. But nonetheless, not my will, be, but your will be done. I wish this was my life. I wish this was my job. I wish this was going on. But you know what? Nonetheless, not my desires, but your desires be done. You want to walk in victory? There you go. You want to walk in freedom? There you go. You're not going to get it coming to church and sitting on a Western church Christian pew. It don't work like that. It doesn't work at all. And listen, sometimes suffering is the vehicle that will get you to a place where you pray. And that prayer, that, not just pray, but that prayer, that praying, that moves mountains. The Bible talks about the deep inside of you. Crying out to the deep inside of God. Most people, most Christians don't pray. I think statistics like 80, 90% of Christians barely, hardly ever pray. The rest of those Christians, they pray, they have a devotional life, they have discipline, but they often like lack passion. You pray every day, you kind of find yourself sometimes going, now I lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord is my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, you all know it. Is that a prayer? It is a prayer. But you know the prayer that moves God? You know a prayer that pleases God? is a prayer of desperation, a prayer of hunger, a prayer of deep, kind out to deep. We quote the verse all the time, bro. We quote the verse all the time. Oh, we're going to cast that mountain back to the sea. I ain't yet to see it. And you're talking to a guy that's tried to walk on water four times. I've sunk four times. I have spit dirt in my daughter's eye. Because she's blind in one of them. I believe, Dad. You know I do. I'm a fool of my believing. I actually heard this during praise and worship. I saw Diane, and I don't know if she's still in here. I can't see these lights. There she is. And all the people jumping around and worshiping God and, and all these things. And I, and I saw people. I could feel people's displeasure. Not God. God was pleased. And I sit there and I said, I will take this over that stiff all day long. Let me say that over here. I will take that radical, crazy, growling, smoking, shooping, hooping, looping, shandai, mandai, wandai, worship that I would do all day than a stiff that's been coming for 20 years and can't clap their hand. I'll take it all day long. I'll take that all day long. That's called childlikeness. And what yours is called is P-R-I-D-E, bro. I'm not here to throw a judgment stone. But if I can knock you down so you get up right, I'll hit you. I'm going to say this again. Most don't pray. Some pray from discipline, but 
Sometimes through the mundaneness of praying, the passion kind of lacks. The man suffering, persecution, lack. That produces prayer that moves the heart of God. Some of the greatest moves of God are found in areas that with the most lack and suffering. The greatest move of God, me and Abram, and Stephen, if he's in here, Abram was talking about Dak, um, Yoon, whatever his name is. Yoon, 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 Boon, whatever his name is. You can fix that later. And <laughs> you'll go make fun of me later. And, 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 you know, he's been thrown out of windows. He's been left for dead. He served tw- whatever it is, 20 plus years in prison. You know what? The Chinese church is rocking right now. You, and everybody's like, we want revival like the Chinese church. You better ask, watch what you ask for. Because you ain't going to be able to sit in your Western pew. You're going to be able to sit there in your American comfort and go to church and feel good about yourself. Those people will die having church. We can't get people to come to church, Dad. But, Lucas, we have a hard time getting people to be faithful to the house of God, even though the Bible commands us in the last days not to forsake those to come together to the Lord. I mean, we lack people. You know what? But they die for it. In the Muslim in the Middle East, they die. They beg to go to church. That's where their Jesus fish came from. They would draw the line. If it was safe to come in, they would draw the other line. The ichthus came from a persecuted church. Most of you know it as the Jesus fish. It's where it came from. It's where it came from. And I would rather, you know, watch what I say. I'll say this, this. I want revival over everything. I don't want to return to prosperity and have a sleeping, dying church. Bring the persecution on. I know that's a very, I'm in the minority on that one. But I've learned that I'm pretty much in the minority in everything, so it's good. <laughs> Most don't pray. Some pray else to this one. Often, what we see in the natural is a reflection of what is happening in the spirit. Man, my dad and Mike, Pastor Mike, <laughs> excuse me, he's been saying that my whole life. And right now, Indiana's dry. I drove past the fire station, and it has these big, bold letters, burn ban, effective. You're a firefighter, is that what it says, Caden? We're not supposed to burn. Don't come to my house. But it's not supposed to burn. (laughs) Kind of. It's a burn ban. Why? Everybody look at me, please. I'll try to wrap up, but I will not hurry the Holy Spirit. Why? Is there a burn ban, Mr. Firefighter? Because right now, it's so dry. And if the wind's blowing at all, the smallest spark can turn into the greatest flame. Can anybody see where I'm going? (laughs) What happens in the natural often reflects what's happening in the spiritual. We are in a dry season. One of the driest seasons Indiana has been in many, many years. There's a burn ban because of the burn ban because of the smallest spark can create a field fire. You want to ask about field fires, ask my brother and Dan Young. <laughs> I had to help him. My shoes are still black, Vinny. He owes me a pair. <laughs> Remind me about that. I stomping that out because Dan let that fire. Tasha goes, what are you doing? Me and Dan are trying to <laughs> get shovels. We're trying to get that fire out. It wasn't really him. It was a worker, but, you know, we'll blame Dan. Being a good neighbor. Listen, and I believe it's dry, Judy. And I believe God is saying, be bold and be strong for the Lord of God is with me. Because I believe that, that, that the shaking that we've been experiencing over this house, two words that went forth. First word was, everything that can be shaking will be shaking. We have been seeing that. The other one was that we are at a threshing floor. Y'all heard of the word of the Lord. Don't forget the words of the Lord. We are at a threshing floor moment. We have seen both of those fulfilled. Big time. We've seen both of those fulfilled. And guess what? Because of those things, dryness has come. But what's happening is there's going to be somebody, and I believe there's people in this room, that you're going to rise up, and you're something inside of you. You know what? I don't feel bold. I don't act bold. I just, my life's not the greatest right now. I feel dry. I feel, but you know what? I'm not going to go by what I feel. My mom just talked about that. Lucas just talked about that. But I'm going to go by what the word of the Lord says. And the word of the Lord says, be bold and be strong, for the Lord thy God is with me. And if I'm bold, guess what? One little spark 
can ignite a whole city. One little ministry giving coats and hats to people who are in less. You know why? That could create a citywide revival. You know, we're just, we're, no, you're not. You're obeying the word of the Lord. And that's what brings the fire. I applaud y'all. I hate iPads. Sometimes in dry season, people start falling. Remember the children of Israel when they were thirsty? And say, the person that did all the miracles in Israel, Dad. God used all the, the Moses, for the ten plagues, the parting of the Red Sea. And now they're thirsty. Now it's dry. Now they're in the desert. And now they want to drink. No matter what they saw. Now they're murmuring, complaining, saying, you should have left us in Egypt. Why are you bringing us out here to die? Have you guys ever think about the foolishness of these people? They just saw the Red Sea part. They walked through. They saw their enemies drowned. They witnessed the ten plagues of Egypt. And none came nigh to them. They witnessed all these things, Mark. And now they want a little drink of water. And Moses is a fake. He's a horrible leader. He don't know. He's not a man of God. He brought us out here to die. What a, we should have stayed back in Egypt. What's going on? You know what happens in dry season? Murmuring and complaining and fault finding and bickering and accusation and all these things happen during the dry season. You know what happened? But you know what Moses, he got a little frustrated. He kicked the rock. He got kind of suspended from the promised land, but he's still in the good promised land. The real one. It's called heaven. Some of you guys over your head. <laughs> but you know what? Just because you're dry and just because sometimes there's services in this room that feels dry doesn't mean the leadership's wrong. I'm bold enough to say if he tells me to make it rain, I'll make it rain. He tells me not to stop it, I'll stop it. I do what he says. He wants me to highlight the gold dust and the oil, I'll highlight the gold dust and oil. He says not talk about it for a month, I won't talk about it for a month. He says heal the sick, I'll heal the sick. I'm just going to do what he says. I'll do it with boldness. And because I do it with boldness, he shows up. We've, we've gotten in a trap at the American church. This is all free. If you need to go, go. I don't dismiss church ever. I'll never been dismissed church. You want to go, you go. Have fun. Eat some Culver's for me. We've gotten this habit, what we call good church, good music, and a good sermon. I'm a worship leader, and I love good music. And I preach sometimes, and I love a good sermon. But that doesn't qualify anything as a successful moment. The kingdom of God is not taught. We go home, and we have our Sunday dinners, and that the American dream. The American Christianity. We go have our dinner and we live our lives the way we want to live it through Monday and Saturday and we come back. It's, you know where that came from? That's leftover from the first Reformation when we separated from the Catholic Church. It did, that part stayed. We got rid of a lot, but that one stayed. What does the Catholic Church do? They go to their priest. They live like they want. They go to their priest say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Give 17 Hail Marys and a kiss to some necklace and you're good. I actually don't know a whole lot about them. I love Catholics. I ain't hell married anything, though. I'm hell Jesus. But anyway. Listen, God is not mad. God is not judging us. But God has been shaking. He's revealing. Some people feel dry. But remember what the Lord said. Be bold and be strong. The Lord is with us. Listen, this is prophecies over this house in the last just few months. Some of you guys don't get to come on the Thursdays and the Sunday nights, and that's fine. But this, sometimes that's when the words go forth, so we miss them. But so let me just give you a little refresher or a review for some of you. But it's been prophesied over this house that whatever is shaken will be shaken. We saw that one. It's prophesied over this house that we were being brought to the threshing floor. I've already said that. It's been prophesied over this house that, that this month, this month of October, which we're in the last week of, is a shifting season. Whatever happens in the natural happens in the supernatural. There's no greater shifting season, Dad, than October. Green leaves October 1, no leaves October 
31st. And in between, some of the most beautiful scenery in Nina gets, right? But it was prophesied that in this month, there would be a shifting. There would be a shifting, in, in, in not just in, in, in the atmosphere, but in the church. And I don't believe it's just for Bethel Church, but I believe the, the Big C Church in the month of October. There's a shifting occurring right now as I'm speaking. Heaven is... Heaven is shifting things. Right now, as I'm speaking, things are being moved, and we just sit there, and we're having church, and you're hearing some crazy guy that gets loud, and it's quiet, and tells jokes, and tells stories, and we're like, oh, he's not a bad speaker, but then you don't know what's going on in the heaven. The angels are at work. The princess is at work. Heaven is at work. Heaven is bringing a great shifting season, Phil. Let me finish. The word of the Lord went off, and I know this is a Thursday. That went off and said, by the end of this year, there will be no more talk of dry, but of an abundance of rain. That went a couple Thursdays ago. God said that. God said, by the end of this year, 2024, right? <laughs> Is that the year? By the end of 2024, by the end of this year, there will be no more talk of dry. But the rain gauges, where's Luke? He got rain gauges. I know him. I used to work. You know what I mean? He had rain gauges. Right now, they're pretty dry. You're probably watering everything. You're getting those little cart girls working. You know what I mean? <laughs> you do. You know what I'm saying? That? But you have a rain gauge. Joel, you do rain gauges. And you have rain gauges, and it's been dry. I'm telling you, you're going to have to dump them out by the end of this year because they're overflowing. That's a word of the Lord. That happened a couple of Thursdays ago. Phil Davis comes up to me during worship. Come here, Phil. You're the next contestant on Bethel's Right. Let's go. You got to run. That's not excitement. There we go. I know that's the most you run in a couple years, but me too. I want you to tell them what you just told me. I know it's short, but I want you, I want it to come from your mouth, not mine. You remember what you said? Let's do it. Uh, there's a flood coming, and it's a flood of his presence. That's, basically. that's short, but sweet. But it validates the word of the Lord. That's the most I've ran in a couple years. You know what you saw in the back of the house? Tell him. Listen. I was getting ready for church, and um, women, you know how we bend over to dry our hair a lot of times. And when I was bent over drying my hair, I felt water on my back. And um, I thought, that's, w that's weird. And I looked up, and it's not raining. It's not leaking. Our shower doors closed. And I put my hand back there, and it was actual water. It was wet. And so I'm learning to do this. And I said, Lord, what does this mean? And he said, the rain is coming. Now you have what happened two weeks ago on a Thursday. You have Phil coming up here this morning. You have heard this. You think God's saying something? Or are we just going to sit there and just go to have church, go home, and keep doing our day to day? I'm here to prophesy to somebody in this room, Steve. The rain is coming, and you can be part of it, or you can be a spectator of it. But I promise you, the rain is coming. And it'll come through one or it'll come through a whole family, which is his, his will. But it is coming. God spoke to me this morning. He said, Nathan, you, we are in, you are entering into the church, the global church, the big C church, is entering into Isaiah 60 season. Luke, I know you're better than me. I had to look it up. <laughs> I was like, okay, yes, God, Isaiah 60 season. What's it say? Yeah, I'm going to go look that up. Google Isaiah 60 season. Come here. I want you to hear this. Tasha's a better reader than me in my contacts because I'm getting excited and they're sweating so I can't see nothing. I'm not getting old. It's not bifocals. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You thought that, I rebuke you. Get behind me, Satan. When you read the highlighted person, they have it on the screen too. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Through 18. Read it for me, hon. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, 
and your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Cater shall be gathered together to you. The rams of Neboth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their roosts? Surely the coastlands shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish shall come first to bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, and the name of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. The sons of foreigners shall build upon your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut by day or night, that men may bring to you the wealth of Gentiles and the kings in procession. For the nation and kingdom which will not serve you shall perish, and those nations shall be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the pine, and the box tree together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Also the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bowing to you. All those who despised you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet, and they shall call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no one went through you, I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and milk the breasts of kings. You shall know that I, the Lord, am God, your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. And instead of stones, iron. I will also make your office, officers peace and your magistrates righteousness. Violence shall no longer be heard in your land, neither wasting nor destruction within your borders, but you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Listen, ain't that good? Listen to me. I want to just highlight a few things first. If you see three or four times, it says, it says, your sons and your daughters are going to return. I'm here to tell somebody in this room, you've been waiting for sons and daughters to return. And I'm telling you this season mark of an abundance of rain, it's going to call forth what looks impossible in your eyes, what looks impossible in your mind, what looks impossible. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And it's not going to happen. It's going to happen quickly. It's going to happen fast. And you're going to be like, what the heck's going on? What's happening? I'm telling you what's happening. It's raining. You're going to see miracles. You're going to see signs. You think gold dust and oil or something? That's just an appetizer about what God is about to do. Everybody in this room, you are invited to the party, but you have to say yes. I've said yes. I say yes. I say yes. And if you don't, you can't say yes, you don't have the courage to be bold so your kids will come home. I'm going to be bold for you. That's what family does. Man, the marriages are going. Man, we can afford everything going on. Adam just, it's everything. There's, we can afford, it's, it's, it's coming. Why? Because it's raining. To honey, it's raining. I know there's doubters in this room because your theology's whack. So I challenge everybody in this room. You believe you way, you believe I believe the way I believe. Just give it some time. And if I'm wrong, I'll repent. I'm not wrong. Because I don't go by just what the Holy Spirit says. We have a Holy Spirit says epidemic at the church. The Holy Spirit says this. The Holy Spirit says that. You know why you're not supposed to be discipled by the Holy Spirit? You're supposed to be discipled by spiritual authority. Oh, nobody's going to like this one, Dad, but this is for you. Because <laughs> you're nicer than me. Listen to me. If you've never been a disciple, you're not qualified to be a disciple maker. If you've never been under, you never deserve, you don't, you don't deserve on top. 
Well, I feel like the Holy Spirit said this. I'm telling you, Dad, I've heard so many people say that lately, and it's from demons. You can't just do what the Holy Spirit tells you. Well, my heart feels like that's the Holy Spirit. Your heart is deceptively wicked, the Bible says. Why in the heck would you trust that thing? That's not Old Testament. That's New Testament. That's the dispensation of grace that it says that. What's the word say? What's the Bible say? Well, the Holy Spirit said he will never contradict the scriptures. Well, the Bible says this, and it kind of agrees. You never make doctrine or a belief system out of one scripture. That's foolishness. And you better always read it in context. You'll find yourself following wolves in sheep clothing. The Bible says even the devil appears as an angel of light. You better be careful, bro. It's not a joke. And I've always teased about the Jesus epidemic where we slap Jesus' name on everything. But now, Dad, we're slapping Holy Spirit. We're sitting there saying, this is my desire. I put a little stamp of Holy Spirit and call it God. It is not God. It's demonic. Is this too strong for you? Man, I had you shouting, and now you don't want to hear me. You guys are about ready to run the aisles, and now I've got a little heavy, and you're like, oh, bro, I don't know about that. I'm telling you. The Bible says in the last days, if he had not shortened the days, Dad, the Bible says he hadn't shortened the days, even the elect. What's that mean? The people that know the most, the spiritually mature, they would be deceived. Is that what the Bible says? Luke, is that what the Bible says? Thank you. Read your Bible. And a lot of stuff you're hearing is not God. Well, man, that's, that's judgmental, No. I've been quiet for long enough. And I ain't being quiet no more, Mark. And I'm not coming with you with talk. I'm coming with you with power and authority. I'm coming with you with signs and wonders. Mark 16 says these signs should fall into the belief. They'll cast out demons in their name. They'll still stomp on serpents and they'll do all these other funds. They'll drink it's deadly poison and it won't hurt them. That's why you can drink a Mountain Dew and feel good about it, Joel. I don't know if you still drink this. I do. <laughs> I love him. I have a whole other message, and I'm not going to go because I feel like he don't want me to share it on discipleship. There's two things. All I'll say about it, Jill, is this right here. With the rain, comes. To, there's two moves that's going to come. Number one is disciple makers have to become disciple makers. There are qualifications to be leaders. You don't get to be a leader because you want to be a leader. Everybody look at me. You don't get to be a leader because you want to be a leader. There's scripture tells you what qualifies you and what disqualifies you. If you're disqualified, you go to the throne until you get qualified. We have too many people wanting to be disciple makers and they can't even qualify what Paul tells Timothy. Not in kind what Galatians and Ephesians says. Your gifting don't qualify you. Your prophesying don't qualify you. Your casting out demons don't qualify you. You know what qualifies you? Your character. Can I read that real quick? Stand with me. Here's what qualifies you. You're faithful to your wife. You have children that love God. You're sober-minded. You have self-control. You're able to teach. You're not a drunkard. You're not violent but gentle. You're not quarrelsome. You don't love money. You walk in love, and you walk in the fear of the Lord. That qualifies you. And then you have the big one. The second and the biggest part is we have to have people willing to be disciples. In America, we don't like to be told what to do. We don't like instruction. We want to be independent. I'm telling you, the independent spirit is demonic. He called us to be a family with fathers and mothers and sisters and brothers, all walking free, Jake Hamilton says. We're supposed to be a family. I got to do this, Dad. Give me those. I have two tape measures. I know I'm going to get made fun of later, so I'm using Abram. Abram, get up here. Bryce, get up here, please. You're the next contestants on the prize. That's right. We might have a, we're going to give away a new car one day. 
Bryce, stay there. Abram, stay. Sit, boo boo. I want you to take this thing. You ever used a tape measure before? It's called measurements. Okay. Look, go as far as you can. Come on, Tuffy Luffigus. Uh oh. It's a 35 foot, you're not getting there. Watch him, watch him, watch him. Come here, Bryce. How, you didn't see how far you get. I was going to beat you later, but we'll do it again. I'll still beat you. Listen. Listen, what happens is that's what we do when we're independent, when we don't want to rely on each other. We've been hurt. We've been broken. And so we sit there and we're trying to grow in God. We're trying to progress in God. We're trying to do those things. But you know what? You can only go so far with you and your circle. You have to have a body. You have to have a church. You have to do that. I want you to do it again. Abram. Bryce, come here, please. I know you're his brother. About 10 feet. So it won't break. Jeremy Spencer, come here. Andale, andale. Hold it about 10 feet. I know you know your stuff. Mark, come here. Keep going. It's 35 footer. I paid 20 bucks on this thing. We can't go. Stay there. Everybody stay there. We can only go this far, Dad, on our own, with our own might and our own power and our own ability. We can't do it. We have to have each other. Nobody has tried to be an individual and independent more than me. I've been hurt. I've been rejected. I've been talked about. I've been confused. And Adam, I got a mindset. I don't need nobody. I'll do it by myself. And God showed me you can only go this far. But if you get a Bryce, and he could be a covenant brother with you, you know what happened? You could go farther. Oh, my God, what's it look like? Glory to glory. And then you get another brother, Jeremy, and you can go farther. And you get another brother, Mark, and you can go farther. Stay there. You guys are doing good. It's not heavy, you wimps. And how far can we go? That's why the Bible says that we must be one as he and the Father is one. We don't have to get along. We don't have to like each other. But we got to be united in Christ. And I'm telling you, as a, whatever I am to this church, I'm telling you, I hear the word of the Lord, Mark, and it's saying it's about to rain. And you are invited to the party, but look at me. You can't do it by yourself. You better have somebody that can tell you no and somebody that can tell you yes. I have somebody that will tell me no, and I have somebody that will tell me yes. Even Paul, Adam, more qualified than James probably if you went by signs and wonders. He goes all the way back to the church of Jerusalem to ask about circumcision. Jill Paul could have made his own decision, and he was probably in every one of our eyes in this room qualified to make that decision. But Paul knew something that we didn't get. Paul knew that he needed a brother. He needed Brother James. He needed Pastor James. Pastor James, I got all these Gentiles being saved. What should I do, Pastor James? What Pastor James do? He got the other brothers. He got the other brothers. They prayed about it. And they cried out. They told Paul, Paul, what we feel the Holy Spirit is saying, not what I feel the Holy Spirit is saying, what we feel the Holy Spirit is saying. He's saying that the Gentiles need to abstain from immorality and sex and blood from strangled animals. And Paul says, I was excited and encouraged by the result of the brothers of the Lord. It was the very thing I was feeling. Glory be to God. And I'm telling you, I prophesy to you today. There's a rain coming. 
and every person is invited. It don't matter if you've been saved a thousand years like Vicky or medium like Ben or a prepared new person. It does not matter how long you were invited to the party, but you can't do it your will and your way. You have to do it his will and his way. You can't do it because you think it's right. You gotta have people to surround you and you have to have authority that covers you. You gotta have family that will sit there and say, no, 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 Abram, no. But Nathan, I feel like, man, I said, no, I don't feel it. He's a man, he can do what he wants. But if I really love him, I'm not gonna hold my tongue. That's a coward, not love. And we just talked about Mama Bear, didn't we? Ain't no Mama Bear going to let her son or daughter get beat up on. Abram, you're not going to let Walker get stepped on. You're not going to do it, bro. I know you. You love the kid. You're not going to let it happen. You're going to defend that kid to the death. A great parent will give his very life for their kid. And that's the love we're supposed to have for one another. Judy, I'm not going to let you fall. You ain't going to let me fall. Because I can't go to the destination without Judy. And I can't go to the destination without Adam. I can't go to the destination without Ben. I can't go to the destination. Man, guys, look at me, please. I want to. I don't want you guys. That's my flesh. But guess what? It's not my will. It's not my way. It's his. You guys go down. Do not steal my tape measure. You want to put that back up the church. I'll see you in Mexico <laughs> on your belt. I know how you roll. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, we're done. But I'm telling you, there's a cry. Jenny, I was so proud of you for talking today. I know that's hard for you. It's not your nature, but you did it. You were obedient. That pleased the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you guys, everybody, please. I'm going to let Lucas take off in a second. And there's manifestation. If you want to see it, I'll send somebody around with a flashlight. There's not a doubt in my mind it's here. I, I'm 100%. But I'm telling you, yes, it's been dry. Yes, things have been shaken. Yes, we've been hurt. Yes, Lucas talked about it all last Sunday. Yes, yes, and yes. But God is setting us up for the rain. He's setting you up for the rain. Your sons and daughters are about to come to Christ. You know what? what your, your, your situation is going to be turned. I am not a prosperity preacher. Matter of fact, I probably throw stones at those more than anyone. But I, ha- I can't deny what he told me. I can't deny he led me to Isaiah 60. I can't deny that. I know you got to go. It's 106. I do not care. They won't come back. If that's the kind of church you're looking for, it's probably at your house. Go to another one. It's cool. But I'm telling you, if you want the rain, I want you to spend five minutes. I'm not doing all call. I'm not praying for nobody. I have another message. I don't know if I'll do it tonight or Thursday. I feel like I'm supposed to share it about discipleship. We'll see what happens. But here's what I feel. If you sit there and say, I want the rain, I say yes. I want to be bold and strong. I want to lean on the word of the Lord like I've never leaned on the word of the Lord for. I want to believe like I want. I want the faith to return to my heart and to my house. If that's you, if you want to have your American Christianity, I love you. I won't throw another stone at you. You understand that? You can just watch me burn. That's what... John Wesley said. Well, that's arrogant. No, John Wesley said it. You wouldn't call him arrogant. Miss Wigglewer said it. You wouldn't call him arrogant. Why do you call Nathan arrogant? Because you know me. Familiarity is the thief. If that's you, I just want you quickly to come up and, and say, God, I choose you. God, I choose you. God, not my will, but your will. God, I choose you. God, I choose you. I want to be bold. I want to be strong. I want to lean on the word of the Lord. I'm tired of my pity. I'm tired of when it's going to change. I'm tired of those. I'm sitting there saying, when's it going to change? God, I know I'm going to command it to change because I know who I, who's and whom I am. God, I just pray in Jesus' name. God, I somebody cry out. Somebody desperate. Somebody hungry. Somebody thirsty. Somebody sick of the dry. Somebody sick of your spouse still being an alcoholic. Somebody sick of your kids not being around. Somebody let the deep inside of you cry out to the deep inside of God let things shake let's move a mountain today let's move a mountain today let the deep inside of us move a mountain today
more time. I want you guys to let out a shout from the deep inside of you. It's going to rattle all the way in Washington, wherever sex she's at. All the way. All the way. All the way. The Bible says that the deep inside of you cry out to the deep inside of God. That is a scripture. That means there's a place that you can tap into that you can't normally tap into. Most of us never get there. Most of us never attain that ability because we cut ourselves short. Mighty warrior, mighty, 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 mighty warrior, mighty, 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 mighty warrior. And slay a giant, I can take a jawbone and slay an army, I can take a lunch, feed a multitude. Can you believe it? And I can take a slingshot and slay a giant, I can take a jawbone and slay an army, I can take a lunch and feed a multitude. Cause I'm a mighty, 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 God, mighty, mighty, mighty. Mighty, 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 mighty warrior, yeah. I'm a mighty, 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 a mighty, 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 a mighty, mighty, yeah. Listen, I feel like there's somebody in the room, this is the last thing. There's a place where this father wanted his son healed, and Jesus in a nutshell said, do you believe? And he said, Yes, Jesus, I believe, but help my unbelief. How many knows that story in the scriptures? I feel like there's somebody that you're like, man, I believe it. But there's still a, a, a piece of me that has a doubt. That's not a judgment thing. That's a, that's, there's a freedom coming to you. If that's you, I need you to raise your hand quickly, please. So over here, is anybody over here? Vicky. All right. I need some people, some family members that will hold the tape measure. There's a lady back here. Hey, Mary, we do that for me. We go with this lady back here, all the way in the back. Or Jenny, somebody knows her. Why what does what those people raise their hand? What they're saying is they need somebody to hold the tape measure. So it won't break. That's what they need. 
and there's no judgment there. That's called, that's what family does, man. That's what family does, Austin. And I want you guys to get around these people. Lift your hands if you don't have somebody around you. I'm done after this. You, we can just, you Lucas can do what Lucas does. There's a guy in a beard. Hey, bro, is you, do you have your hands up for that? No, you good. You're shining like a glowworm in his lights. And so we're going to sing, Lucas, sing whatever the heck you want. And I want you guys to pray, but don't pray some. Don't pray some generic prayer. Come on, let the deep inside of you make intercession for them. That is your brother, and that is your sister. That is the key for you yourself even going to another level. So right now I'm going to count to three, and I want you to go. One, two, three. I want you to pray. Go ahead, pray for them.